day we were sitting on a patio and this school bus came right down the main strip and you could tell there was a chimney poking out the, the top and it just kind of had this really cool vibe to it and we were kind of just looked at each other and we were already toying with the idea of building a school bus or a van and that I think at that moment that solidified that we wanted to do the bus conversion. I don't know it just screamed a lot of freedom for us. And we loved the idea of you don't like where you are you just go somewhere yeah. else you know and we did it in like the worst way possible where we bought it in the fall, worked in it all winter, and then left for the summer, which is like, yeah. normally you should do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. But it took us, uh, we were both working full time. So I'd say like about a month and a half of full work mm -hmm. to, to do the conversion, but we did it over like uh, just, just under six months. I think. And we were working minus 35 degree weather in yeah, this bus. And it's, it, it had no heat or any insulation, so it was quite cold. And Jacob was doing a lot of the actual um, construction aspect of it. And I was, you know, just sewing and doing my things, trying to stay warm and just moving material around. While we were building the bus, we were really focused on the idea of reusing uh, materials rather than buying things new so uh, fortunately we have a lot of connections in our hometown Jacob's family has like a whole bunch of barns and even Jacob was born and raised on a farm so we we're able to repurpose a lot of the wood a lot of our barn wood that you see um, even you know the from the curtains to the pillows to even the carpets I used um, materials that I found either at like secondhand thrift shops or what I already owned and um, and a big part of that was just, we one, are on a budget, um, two, that's kind of our philosophy generally, where they're- In life, not yeah, just in this, yeah, so we wanted to apply it mm -hmm. to everything we do. And like even with our clothes, when we're shopping, we always try to shop secondhand with our furniture. The bus cost us 3500 We bought it in Drummondville, Quebec. We got new tires, which were costly but necessary. And then we had to get a lot of mechanical work done. It's close to four in mechanical work. And then the rest of the conversion kept us under, you know, between 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. You know, we did all the work. We, like we said before, like reclaimed a lot of the wood and tried to, you know, cut costs where we mm -hmm. could and reuse. <laughs> Welcome to the Free to Wander bus, or Frida for short. Um, she's a 2002 GMC schoolbird, and yeah, let me show you around. So this is the driver's seat, best seat in the house, I guess. Um, we don't have AC or anything, but we've got a nice window here, so that was nice for when we were driving in the summertime, some nice fresh air. Uh, this is our dining area. We just pull these stools out here, and it's really nice because we can look outside no matter where we are, if we're in the Rocky Mountains or if we're alongside a river. It's always a really special view and even one time we were sitting out here and we had bears walking out so that was a fun meal. This here is the couch area um, slash where you sit when your partner's driving I guess. Um, it actually worked too. My sister came and stayed with us on our last trip and she was able to bunk here so it's nice. We kind of designed it. I'm six feet tall so I laid down and made sure that I would have enough room if I wanted to take a nap or something. We've got storage underneath there. We just put baskets and um, I don't know extra linens, towels, toilet paper and everything and served its purpose. Got our sink here, do some dishes. Nice counter space. I was really, really wanted a lot of counter space just because we, you know, if we wanted to prepare a meal of any kinds, we'd be able to. And um, all of the drawers, we have little locks on the sides, but you know, we store our cutlery, some more linens, some games, um, some, you know, lighters, matches, all of those things, camping stuff. These drawers as well served a really good purpose. They had the locks too, but uh, a lot of Jacob and I's food that we eat is in mason jars. So we designed these three drawers to be the height of the mason jars and we made sure that they could hold a lot of weight. This is actually where the wheel wells are. 
So it's kind of an awkward space, and we found that a lot on YouTube and stuff with people's conversions. They've, o- they've always, you know, suggested kind of fun ways that you can incorporate the wheel well. So we were able to just build these little storage units here too because I brought my business on the road with me. I was able to use both of these uh, cabinets for the, like for storing all of my stuff as well. We have like the firewood and everything in here for our stove. We definitely wanted to have a separate heat source in the bus and very much like a natural heat source. We love wood stoves. Um, so we got this from Cubic Mini Wood Stove in Montreal, Quebec. And it's not hooked up right now. We, Because we were traveling last year in the summer months, we didn't need it. And then because we decided to put Frida into um, hibernation, I guess, we didn't take the time. We have all of the parts just to dr- uh, drill the hole through the roof and then put in all of the fancy, the rubber boot and all those things. Jacob knows a lot more about that than I do. So our intentions are to install it and it can heat up to uh, 250 square feet or like a 40 foot space because it is a stove that's designed for um, RVs or fishing huts or cabins of any kind. So yeah, it's absolutely perfect for what we need. Our friends Jay and Chantel from Life Without Plastic were kind enough to uh, give this to us. It's a stainless steel water canister. So we have the 15 liter size as well as the 25 liter size. And what we did uh, while we're on the road and what we'll remain to do for our next travels is we just go to a a natural spring and we just fill up those with water and that becomes our fresh water source. And there's a little spout and everything and it works perfectly. Funny enough, um, we had the option of doing a washroom or storage closet space. We chose the storage closet space. Um, We did not have one problem on the road with going to the bathroom, you know, between all the roadside stops or we do have um, a porta potty in the back if we, you know, had an emergency. Um, And even we stayed at friends, like we would park the bus at friends or family's places. So we're able to use their facilities. We usually have baskets here that have, you know, paperwork, um, more board games. We stored a lot of our clothes here too, um, a lot of our camping gear. Uh, And then on this side here, there's actually a rod and we were able to hang all of our clothes and there's some baskets and stuff up there too. For showering, if we weren't, you know, bathing in a lake uh, at a campground or anything, we were using friends and family's facilities once again. And we also purchased an outdoor shower, which is in the trunk space in the back. So we would hang that up outside and we were able to use it. This is our bed area. It's a a double bed. Um, It's a really nice nook. I love the idea of the walls being here and, you know, just being surrounded by windows. It's the best way to wake up in the morning. Um, I made all of the curtains that you see here that are hung by like copper plumbing. Um, So we close those at night and then in the morning time, you know, we're able to look outside, wake up slowly. And uh, it's great too because Jacob, what he did is he put a piece of plywood right down the middle underneath the bed. And on this side, we've got um, more storage space all underneath here. And then from the trunk, you're able to access what's called, like what we called our our garage space, I guess. So we keep like Jacob's skateboards or um, cruiser boards. We've got our tent back there. We've got, you know, the tables that I would use for the market and stuff too. So things that I don't necessarily want in the bus that can be maybe a little bit dirty. And then at the end here too, we have a little bit more space just because the double didn't fit all the way to the window. So we, you know, keep our books there, keep our laptops there. And then we've got the shelves on the back too that continue. Our sink, we didn't want to go full crazy, you know, um, like full setup. So we just have a fresh water and a gray water tank and a little 12 volt uh, sea flow pump. So we, we bring in the fresh water, it pumps into the faucet when we need to. We have a little switch to turn it on. Um, <clears throat> and then instead of having something that shoots outside or into a holding tank, we just, when we want to empty it, pull this jug and just hold it to here to empty it. So it's a uh, really simple, not too complicated system. So the tanks in there we'd use for uh, dishwashing, washing vegetables, our hands and stuff like that. And then we actually have a container in here we'd fill up at the spring or something and that's our drinking water. 
so yeah we would just we have two of those so we just fill those up every you know four or five days try and find a spot we have a couple uh, like lighter plugs around that just go to an auxiliary battery that we've put um, in the same spot as the batteries for the bus that is connected to the alternator so like while we're driving while we're doing whatever it uh, charges it's worked for what we need it doesn't give us a lot like it's not like we have a full you know solar setup but it, it worked for what we needed you know the counters Tessa and I actually made my grandfather has a woodworking shop um, so I had access to everything to laminate them together and he had these nice live edge pieces just kicking around that he gave us so we put those on to give it a little accent you know these are as the reclaimed barnwood we were talking about so i made these doors and um tessa got the latches from a boutique uh that she worked at and the same with these things so yeah we um like we said before we tried to use as much you know reclaimed wood that we could and tried to do it all ourselves and have a lot of like wood homey you know look so it didn't so it looked less like a tin can because when we were in here before we started the build with all like the white metal and you know the silver we were like oh my god we're gonna live in like a bullet you know it looks like a you know tin can so we we pulled in a lot of this farmhouse style stuff to really make it like a home you know So we drove it as far as Kelowna, is about as far as we went west. But on the way, we kind of dropped up and down. We went all the way down to Grasslands National Park in Saskatchewan. And then we stayed in Canmore for a while because I have a lot of family there. And then we spent uh, time just kind of driving back between Kelowna and Nelson and all in that area. And we just loved it. Mm -hmm. The great thing too is that I have um, a business, a handmade goods yeah. business, and that's what funded us for the trip. So initially when it's we like started... Farmer's market hopping. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like what set the pace for our trip because we wanted to, okay, well, Golden BC has a great farmer's market or, um, you know, Canmore, Alberta or wherever. Along the way, people would ask us all the time, like, oh, are you going to go into the States? Are you going to go down to Mexico? And we'd be like, well, we thought about it, but then we were thinking how little we knew about our, our, our native own country. country. We were like, yeah. you know, Tessa hadn't been to either coast, I've only been to one. So once we got back from our trip out west, we parked Frida um, at Jacob's family's farm and we just kind of put her in hibernation mode and now that spring is here we're turning her into a temporary bar for our wedding in june then after our wedding we're going to newfoundland and we're just touring all around so ideally what we'll be able to say is that we've traveled coast to coast in our bus 